Hello, Hive Nation. Welcome back to the Hive Nation podcast. Each week, we have leading experts in personal and professional development share their journeys and expertise to help you connect, engage, grow, and evolve. This episode of the Hive Nation podcast is sponsored by Lost River Distillery. Vodka crafted by hand, enjoyed by the best. Hive Nation, today we are with uh, Dave and Allie Curvin from Peterborough, Ontario. They have their own podcast as well. It's called the Wreck and Rise podcast, and I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, For all those of you who don't know what wrecking is, I suggest you look that up first maybe and then go from there. But... uh, Oh, in, in short, uh, rucking is uh, putting a bunch of weights in uh, garden gnomes and stuff in the backpack and then running <laughs> as far as you can. And it's like a whole bunch of weight and stuff. I'm not entirely sure why everybody would like to do it, but Greg does it. Ali does it. Uh, so I'll start with uh, with Ali. Ali is, uh, is very much has the entrepreneurial spirit, just like the rest of us uh works on our on our own, uh, does her own uh, certified positive dog training, which I think is awesome. Uh, I've got a dog that doesn't need any training. He needs attitude training rather than just any other type of training, but uh, he's the laziest guy you would ever meet. But, um, and then Allie is the rock specialist uh, within the Ruck and Rise podcast. So Dave, you're the rise part. Uh, we, we shouldn't go there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the original, the original Ruck ruck part and then uh, and then uh yeah ali i think ali brought the rise well bring both <laughs> the rock and the rise it's awesome it's, yeah. yeah it's 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 a great they, they both go hand in hand it's great and then uh dave yourself uh reservist in the canadian armed forces um uh which is you know kudos to you dave uh thanks for your uh for your service and for your your time spent uh that's uh that's amazing and uh avid sports enthusiast uh, so I'm going to go to Lim here and say, not only do you uh, participate and are competitive that way, but you're a big Blue Jays fan. Is this correct? <laughs> I yeah, I would say I'm an average Blue Jays fan. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, yeah, yeah, you nailed it there. Nailed me there. Uh, baseball's, well, you know, I, I played it through uh, high school and stuff, but uh, I can't say as I'm a you know huge baseball fan. But I love going to the Blue Jays game, so. I give it nice. That. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh that's great. Uh how far is Peterborough from uh from Toronto? It's great. It's only you know 90 minutes uh okay. tops. Um and that's and for us it's a real easy uh drive down to sort of the, the Oshawa Go station and we can hop on the Go train and get right to Union Station and then you know walk right to the Rogers Center or wherever we need to go. Uh so it, it's a pretty easy trip in and out of the city. Oh, that's perfect if you don't have to drive downtown because exactly you know, don't show. That's right. Um, so yeah, so uh I'd like to just start by asking you guys, uh, you know, just on, on a really small scale, how did you guys start Ruck and Rise podcast and why did you start it? So I'll let I'll let Ali uh tackle that one because this this it kind of I would say is her uh is her baby. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. one of my many passion projects. I would say so my brother died by suicide almost a year ago in April, we're coming up to the year anniversary. So that uh, changed us in our life in every single way possible. And just this huge need for more conversations to be having, uh, being had about mental health and what we can do to help people. And before this happened a few years ago, I had kind of thought to myself, I'd really like to have a podcast because I like listening to them, but I had no clue or direction about what I wanted to talk about and who I wanted to do it with. And it just sort of stayed in the back of my mind for a while. And then about a month after my brother passed away, I was walking with one of my client's dogs and it just came to me. I was like, oh, well, we have to talk about mental health. Dave and I can do it together. I'm going to reach out to our good friend, Kendra, 
because she's very tech savvy and her and I have worked on projects before together. So I know we work well together. And within like an hour of me <laughs> randomly saying this to Dave and to Kendra, they were both in and it just sort of grew almost overnight, really. Yeah. That's a really kind of quick uh, scenario of how it kind of came together. But yeah. you know, that, that's, that's a great way or reason uh, if you want to go for the why. That's a great why as to, to make a podcast. So kudos to you. I really love that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a good journey. Um, and and like Alex says, you know, we we're avid podcast podcast listeners. So um, and there's a there's a great community. Um, you know, you guys are, are involved with it as well. But there's a great community of uh, podcast people that we listen to and feel and draw inspiration from as well. And, you know, are sort of uh, on the same boat promoting that uh, mental health and, and creating mental health initiative, uh, different challenges and stuff. So uh, it just kind of fuels us to, um, you know, keep, keep doing what we're doing and uh, make things even, even better with the podcast. So it's uh, yeah, it's been a good journey so far. Uh, we, uh, we actually just repopulated one of our, uh, our past po podcasts yesterday uh, with uh, Mr. Cam Keller. He's a, mental health specialist out of uh, Vancouver and uh, he does a lot on the executive side and and um, it's funny because we all think that uh, you know they see all these people with uh, you know their their fancy suits and their fancy cars and their fancy offices and you don't really un understand what's maybe going on with them in the background as well so mm -hmm. he does a lot of stuff with them as well and, and he's got his own struggles as well but uh within his own families and stuff but you know so it, it was it's very good timing uh that you talk about that because uh that was a that was another good one yesterday mm -hmm. yeah for sure yes yeah yeah and, I'm, uh, uh, oh go ahead Dave. Uh, i was just gonna say so i'm uh, i'm also an ambassador with uh, wooden warriors canada and uh i'm really really supportive behind uh behind that and i and i really like the, the sort of um direction that things are headed uh and that not only when warriors is taking but uh, sort of us as a collective um you know community in that direction being that uh, we're we're trying to make more of a proactive approach to mental health versus the reactive approach where you know something happens something you know tragedy or, or whatever and then we have to look for those resources or look for those tools in our toolbox so we're really trying to push the uh, the proactive approach and, and do the things now uh, and have the tools in place now that when you know something does come up, you can cope with it and you can uh, carry on with it. So uh, again, through yeah, through Wind Warriors and then also through this community, uh, that seems to be the direction that um, things are headed, and that's that's the way it should be. That's the direction. Yeah, absolutely, that was the way it should be, Dave. I, I tip my hat to you. That's awesome. The, the Wounded Warriors is uh, is an absolute project that should be uh, you know brought forward or brought up more often. I think that's it. Just doesn't get enough uh, attention, and you know we always seem to have a lot of of our vets not get the uh, attention that they that they should. And and uh, so if we can do that here within our uh, you know small outreach uh, I'll, I'll gladly do that any day of the week absolutely yep yeah, absolutely veterans and, and all the first responders um you know at the forefront of it uh as well with their with their jobs it's uh it's essential that they have those tools in place before they even put boots on the ground um for day one of uh, of the job couldn't agree with you anymore with that being said before we before we dive into specific challenges that we're going to talk about today, as far as the outreach and like the help that can be provided from the civilian side of the world to first responders, to veterans, you know, I we consider ourselves really privileged to know a lot of you know former former military members and, and first responders and current. Um, but it always feels it's like, can we help? How do we help? You know, I don't want to look like I'm pretending to be be a, a veteran. So from from your perspective, like how can civilians help out to these uh, or great organizations? Yeah, so a big part of that is, uh, I mean, there's uh, there's there's fundraisers that take place, um, you know, throughout the year in a variety of manners. I mean, uh, you know, 
ruck march is one there's cycling events there's uh just walks there's um outreaches and things like that and so the more awareness and, and some of that falls on us as uh part of wounded warriors or part of organizers of these events some of that falls on us our responsibility to to sort of promote that and, and push that awareness and that education component out there that these are available. And then in the civilian population or civilian world, um, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, coming in and joining, joining with us. Um, and then, you know, there's always online opportunities for donations for, for funds. But, um, you know, another key aspect is, is, is coming out and socializing with first responders and with veterans because, the more, like we also do these uh, mental health walks uh, biweekly, and and they're not they're not for they're not just for veterans or first responders or they're for everyone in the community that just wants to get a little bit more um, out of themselves and connect with nature and just be out. And the great thing is, like you know, we're out there having conversations with um, just you know, civilians uh, that are also facing struggles, whether it's, you know, financial. I mean, there could be a long list these days of, uh, you know, mental health uh, challenges that one could face. And so we're out there having conversations um, and, and, you know, gaining education from one another on uh, what resources are available, you know, maybe on the civilian side and then also what resources are available for first responders and veterans and uh, how we can help one another. So I think that's a big key component is just, it's just coming out and, and uh, going for a walk or, or communicating in person together. Um, I think that's, uh, that's key. And, and so again, part of that falls on us to sort of make mm -hmm. people aware that these events are out there. Yeah. And even that walk, it's free. It we offer carpool um, kind of thing. We go to different locations. We advertise just through Instagram. But even that walk itself is helping. Mm -hmm. You know, it it helps us because we're going out and going out in nature and moving our bodies. But we're connecting with people we didn't know before. We're meeting new people and building a support system in real life, in real time. Like uh, social media is amazing for so many things, but that that in-person connection I think is really important too. And I think we're lacking that. So we're trying to build that up a little bit more. And um, I think it's, we've had a good response so far mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna keep doing that as well, so. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Awesome, so there's one mental health walk or there's multiple, but there's one out in Peterborough bi-weekly and I know Seb's doing, Seb is doing his. Yes. Very we, well. we got the idea from Seb. <laughs> he was like, would you do this? And we were all like, uh, yes. Yeah. Kudos yeah. to you guys. Yeah. So. yeah, Seb's idea first, but we're we're doing it out here. And yeah. yeah. And Same we're hoping, idea. yeah. Yeah, and we're hoping that, you know, yeah, Seb had that initiative and then, and then we're carrying it on. And now we're hoping that other communities sort of across the country can start their own sort of biweekly mental health box and just, Anyone who wants to join, just come out and go for a walk, have some conversation. You don't even have to have a conversation if you don't want it. If you just want to come out and just enjoy nature and get some physical activity and just clear your mind on your own a bit, then great. You know, that's it's there for you. So. Worth it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So on the topic of challenges and, and coming together to help different organizations and causes. Uh, so last month, we kind of all came together for the Push for Better Cause which was great because it uh, really it connected us at, at a at a daily level. We were tagging each other, and and then it led into the Myeloma Cancer March Challenge this month. So you guys, along with Mad Hatter Industries, have championed this. I know there's a huge why for doing this challenge and raising awareness for multiple myeloma. Um, so Dave, Ali, I'll just kind of let you guys talk about why that's so impactful to you and, and the difference that this challenge is making. For sure, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll touch on the the why and then uh, you know, Ali can uh, touch on the challenge itself and, and what we've created that way. So um, yeah, so my sister, uh, Jocelyn, she was diagnosed in 2019 with uh, multiple myeloma cancer. Uh, it's a blood cancer. It's actually the, the second most common cancer out there. And, and I had never heard of it 
uh, prior to Jocelyn being diagnosed, and, and neither had she. And so it's, uh, it, it is, you know, it's kind of mind blowing that uh, it's the second most common. And so needless to say, obviously, that kind of rocked our world uh, with that diagnosis. And um, she she went through initial treatment and uh, did go into remission and, and things were looking really good. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately, this past year, 2023, um, you know, things came back and they sort of came back with a vengeance and um, kind of uh, took control. And then, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Christmas time, uh, 2023, Things uh, went, you know, sort of downhill, and we were pretty limited on uh, on time uh, with Jocelyn. And then, sadly, uh, February fifth, so just last month, uh, she passed away as a result of uh, of this uh, disease. So this illness. So, um, so again, yeah, with these these fitness challenges, um, we've we've always felt the importance of maintaining those uh, for like. Well, obviously for our physical fitness, but more so for our mental uh, stability, our mental health, um, so that we can just get through the day uh, that much easier. We've got goals and we've got something to focus on. And so, as uh, Greg was mentioning, in, in February, we were hammering out push-ups and, uh, and it was great. Um, Allie and I, we had, we started hammering out push-ups December and then we carried into January and then uh, February. And so my my triceps and my chest were yeah, they, they were they were done by by the end of february i got injured and had to switch to sit-ups that's right yeah <laughs> and so so we knew that march with march coming up um we, we knew we wanted to create a challenge of some sort uh we, we wanted to do something different and march um is actually known as um uh, multiple myeloma month so uh, myeloma awareness month and my sister was sort of um, I would say on the forefront or the main advocate uh, individual for uh, pushing that um, month to be declared myeloma month um, especially in Toronto she was from Toronto and she was adamant and and uh, sort of uh, was hounding the um, city council and and was sort of on top of uh creating the yeah that um yeah the trauma being that uh myeloma month or march being the myeloma month and so she was uh she was able to get um the city to you know officially declare uh the city of toronto and the month of march as uh myeloma month awareness month and then they had a last year, this time last year, uh, they had a ceremony downtown, um, Nathan Phillips Square, I think. And then they, they lit up the CN Tower red in, in honor uh, on a particular evening as well. And so, again, like I say, with March coming up, we knew that the challenge had to be tied into uh, multiple myeloma. And obviously that, you know, it's that much more significant with Jocelyn just passing, you know, the month before. Um, so very, very close to, uh, to our hearts. And, uh, so we wanted to make sure that the awareness got out there, uh, about multiple myeloma, but also help, you know, those that are still battling it, um, with, you know, some fundraising, uh, done by it or, um, through the, uh, blood, uh, donations. So, uh, I'll let, yeah, Allie take it away as far as what the challenge involves and how we sort of, uh, you know, came to establish that. Yeah, so we wanted to make it uh, fairly accessible to people from different age groups and everything like that. So we put out a couple different options. So the first option to, and we also have a prize pack with some stuff from us and some stuff from Mad Hatter that we're going to draw a prize. So to kind of get entered in, you can run, walk, bike, or ruck a minimum of 10 kilometers a week. And if you tag us so that we know you're doing it or send us a private message, um, just so we know you've done that, we will enter a ballot into the contest or you can make a donation to Myeloma Canada or you can donate uh, blood to Canadian Blood Services. So lots of different ways you can either, or you can do all the things like it's, we kind of left it open to whatever people wanted, but we wanted just to make sure that people felt like they had different options to get into it. And if you don't like rocking, well, maybe you take your dog for 
a one point whatever kilometer walk a day, you're probably doing that anyways. So just keep track of it and you can get in our prize pack, which is pretty good actually. Yeah. It's uh should we tell them what it did we already tell them what it was? No. 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 Do we want to keep it a secret? No, that's, that's oh, no, okay. I think we should tell people. <laughs> okay. So it's gonna be uh two ruck and rise mugs, which I should have brought some down here so we could have showed you. But there are two ruck and rise mugs. We have a Mad Hatter um journal because journaling is very good for lots of different reasons. And we have stickers, we have I think think maybe a patch and we also have two mad hatter sh of shirts they're long sleeve shirts they're the new ones that they say push, keep, keep pushing keep, forward. pushing forward down the sleeves and they've got like a cool design on the back so i think we've got like a medium and a large so hoping that that will fit right size wise and if we need to exchange it i'm sure we can figure that out but yeah. so it's a pretty good uh pretty good prize pack so yeah. we're hoping that that kind of helps people get motivated because like you know, sometimes just upping it a little bit is just helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, since since my sister has uh, passed, I mean, I I'm I ever since she was diagnosed, I've been learning more and more about multiple myeloma, and then uh, just you know those affected by it. And there is like quite an organization, quite of a, a myeloma society or myeloma organization that of, of support a support system for those um you know battling myeloma cancer and uh and that sort of extends you know across the country and she's since she's passed i've had um individuals that have reached out to me that are also battling myeloma cancer and some of them are are creating uh their own um fitness challenges as well which is really awesome to see uh i mean i know coming up in june there's a there's a girl in uh, Sudbury area that uh, and, and my sister was she was only 48 so she was you know certainly on the younger side of um, you know what's the norm for this uh, cancer um, affecting and this individual is, is even younger than my sister uh, you know um, so and an avid cyclist and so she's actually creating um, I, I think it's a 11 or 12 day uh, 100 kilometers a day sort of a cycling um, journey coming up this summer. And uh, and then she's sort of dedicating you know, each day to a particular individual that uh, is either battling myeloma or has you know, since passed on. So uh, I feel very blessed to have connected with her. Um, I'm actually going to do one of the days uh, on the bike with them. And uh, that day 11, I think it's going to be, is, is going to be dedicated to Jocelyn. And so, so there's another, you know, sort of event uh, that's creating more awareness, and, uh, and and again, more fundraising, more support for for those battling this illness. So it's, so Dave, it's awesome. if you want, if you guys have anything that uh, you can send to us, we'll put out on our on mm -hmm. channels as well. Absolutely, yeah, I certainly will. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So, so with. Um, so since the since the challenge has been going on, I've been I've been trying to spread the awareness as best I can. And I've actually interacted with Corey a ton from Mad Hatter Industries because of it, awesome. which is super awesome. Uh, from, from the little bit I've talked to him, sounds like an unbelievable guy. I've listened to the episode you guys did with him. So when you did this challenge, and I know you guys have worked with him a little bit in the past, why Mad Hatter? Like what, what was the connection there and why would, uh, somebody else connect with Mad Hatter if they're doing their own challenge. Yeah, I'm mean, glad that you've had uh, the opportunity to uh, connect with Corey one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I mean, uh, can't say enough good things about about that guy and, and his wife, V. Um, they're just a, an amazing couple. And that whole Mad Hatter Industries family, community, um, incredibly supportive. So incredibly supportive for uh, the veteran community, but um, just all around great people. I mean, if you're, if you're struggling, if you're, you know, having a tough time, whatever there, there's an ear there to listen. And then they've gone through, you know, their fair share of challenges as well. And, uh, you know, are just continuing to, to push, you know, similar mindset and similar agenda where they just want to do better. They want to be better today than they were yesterday. And uh, Corey's very much of that, of that mindset. 
And uh, I mean, I met Corey um, shooting at, at a range uh, one time. You probably heard it on the podcast uh, before. And, and, you know, the fact that he, I ordered a t-shirt from him and he, he drove it up on his motorcycle and hand delivered it. I mean, that just speaks volume to volume to the character uh, that, that Corey is and the, the individual that he is, that he would, you know, make that effort. Um, and this is, you know, he was living close to an hour away at that time. So it wasn't like a hop on the bike and, you know, mm-hmm. come around the corner kind of thing. It was a, it was a bit of a trek up. So we just had a, kind of an instant connection, um, you know, hanging out in the kitchen, just talking about, you um, you know, a lot about army, uh, but also just a lot about life and, and uh, fitness and, and that positive mindset. And so we really meshed uh, quite well with, uh, you know, Corey and, and his wife and that whole community. And we just started to kind of roll with wanting to be um, a part of something that was headed in a really good direction. And uh, and it's just kind of snowballed into this uh, this really, really good yeah, supportive community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're like he's all he's a very passionate person, right? And it's kind mm-hmm. of infectious, and you can see that in all the stuff in social media. But they're like that in real life as well. So they're, I mean, the word authentic gets thrown around so much right now, but it's true, right? They're they're true to who they are when you meet them in real life, and yeah, we mesh with them really well. They're, you know, they came to our wedding. They're friends of ours, and and we've made really good friends with other people who work with them closely too so it's just opened up this whole community and they're kind of uh our our support as well for doing the podcast as well so we're just we're buds yeah 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 Yeah. and and like i say like like like-minded individuals that uh you know uh corey's into motorcycles uh you know got myself into motorcycles and, and and now i'm into motorcycles and that's right and <laughs> you know and, and the whole fitness uh aspect of just just keeping healthy and, and fit and uh ready for for whatever tomorrow brings um you know cory and that whole community they're all they're all about that so it was real easy to get behind and get uh on on board with them it's awesome yeah how, uh, what's your, what's your thoughts on this? What's your thoughts on, uh, creating a, um, I'm not entirely sure how to say this a community, uh, um, involvement page that ha- would have people, you know, um, maybe volunteer or sign up to do like a, uh, mental health walk, walk in every major center across Canada. Like what, what's, what, how do you, th- what do you think that would look like? I, it's, I think it's a fantastic idea. I mean, so we here in Peterborough, we host um, the uh, Peterborough Rucksack March for Remembrance uh, in, in uh, you know, just before Remembrance Day every year. And how that came to be was uh, there's a, an individual, a veteran in Edmonton that started that event, um, you know, in 2017. And he just sort of uh, kept an eye out, I think, of people that were participating virtually uh, a few years back. And and so he reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in hosting um, a Peterborough Rucksack March for Remembrance. And I said, like, absolutely, I would love to. And then, you know, and then this past year that spooled into, you know, other communities, I think, you know, it went from like, three or four cities in the country that were participating a couple of years ago to, I believe there were like seven, seven to nine uh, across the country that participated. So just things like that, where if you have, um, you know, sort of a website or a platform that uh, just kind of reaches out and says, yeah, yeah like who, who would be interested in, uh, in hosting a walk in your community or hosting a, uh, something some initiative in your community uh, i'm certain that there's you know many many other like-minded individuals in a, in a, a wide range of communities across the country that would get on board and jump on that and say and put their hand up and say yeah i'll uh, i'll take that on so i i think that could i think it could really go far i'm gonna do that yeah we'll, all right we'll watch out for it yeah i like it um could you tell the Hive Nation a little bit more about maybe your target audience and the <clears throat> emphasis and the impact you're trying to 
make with Rock and Rise podcast? Allie? Yeah. <laughs> You're awesome. up. <laughs> now I'm in the hot seat. Um, yeah, I would say like the demographic, I would say it's pretty wide open, which I know sounds kind of flaky, but it it's not just for first responders and the vet community because uh, before I met Dave, I didn't come from a military family. Like everything that I know about the military, which honestly isn't really that much, I've only learned in the last five years of being Dave's partner. And I don't know that much. But... And, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm fascinated by the community and I want to support them as well, but it's also open to, because the mental health affects everybody. And that is just a blanket statement, but it's true. You know, everybody is struggling with something. So the whole point is to get people having these conversations and, and seeing that, you know, it may look like um someone you see on the street you know maybe they're well dressed and and like you guys were saying before and they have a fancy house and fancy car and they may look like they have their shit together but they are most likely struggling with something and just because people don't talk about it doesn't mean that it's not there so i think just having the conversation and just letting people know that it's okay that you are having a hard time and even just talking about it is really the first step you may not be able to help um, you know, we have people reach out to us when they're maybe having a tough time or a tough day. And even just having a little bit of conversation, even if it's through, um, you know, messenger or whatever, that can be really, really beneficial. And I think it just, it normalizes it for people, which I think is the whole point of it for me. And yeah, and just talking about all these different things that happened and, and also this whole other side of, you know what, we all go through these dark times, but there's good things that come from the darkness, right? My brother passed away. I've never experienced a death uh, that close to me before. And now we've gone through two in the last year or going through two in the last year. So grief is a really big part of our conversation every day and our, our lives and stuff like that. But also knowing that we'll look at all these other relationships that we've got to to meet with all these other people through this hard time. And we're going to continue to go through this hard time because it's kind of a lifelong journey. But accepting that and um, realizing that there's, I don't know, I think I always had this thing in my head too where I kind of thought like, you know, when you're 30 or you turn 30, you're sort of just in the same job for forever and you're probably not going to learn more. For some reason, I had that stigma in my head, whereas now I'm like, oh, I think I'm going to change careers and I think I'm going to go back to school. Like there's so much more life, even though there's still hard times and darkness, even that you carry with you on a daily basis. And it is a choice for me anyways, every day to maybe I have to choose it like 50 times to be like, hey, okay, now we're going to go do this or you get to go do this and reframing it in your mind. And sorry, I got on a little bit of a, a rant there, but I hope that made sense. <laughs> well, it's good to get the ages and obviously just the number and you don't have to, you know, people use it as a crutch, you know, a lot of times, but, you know, yeah. you, sh you should use it more as a motivation rather than a crutch, but. Exactly. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I hope you do that. You should absolutely, if that's your passion, if that's your purpose in life, I 100% uh, applaud you to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've really had a big shift lately and my passion and my interests have, have mm -hmm. changed and are continuing to change. And I'm really excited about kind of what's going to come and things that I haven't even really thought of yet, but I can feel like I'm on this new, new path that I'm kind of blazing. <laughs> as fast as I can but it's not actually going as fast as I want it to but that's how things things take time so learning how to be patient at the same time that's hard we it have is. the same thing I we don't like slowing down <laughs> when we get slowed down that's like our our biggest frustration it's broken yes. up. But when you're forced to slow down it's it's never good so that's why I think you know these challenges are great JB and I talked about this uh, last week and uh, we've kind of been talking about it ever since the push-up challenge where, uh, and, and we've touched on it today where, yeah, not everybody likes to be out in front and likes to show people what they're doing. And that's great. Go do your challenge in silence and just you know, shoot me a text saying that you're doing it um, or not. I, I know lots of people that were doing the push-up challenge that had just told me, they're like, man, I was doing the push-ups right along with you. 
Like that's so great. That's awesome. Uh, but I think it's it's really cool, especially in the network that we're interconnected in, where there is a ton of high performers and first responders and competitive people, where these challenges give us a reason to connect every day, even if it's just a, hey, I got my push-ups in, where are yours, right? So, <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, going forward, I said this and, and I'm going to stick to it. We're going to try to find a challenge every month to create or do um, for some reason, whether it's just mental health or de-stress uh, or for a benefit. Like in June, we're trying to plan something to support Satch with his run. Uh, awesome. And we're just going to keep going. So I haven't completely got April wrapped up. Zach from Mentel and the Kenny podcast to me are still going back and forth. We got to button that up. But next month is anti de or sorry, is de-stress month. It's anti-stress awareness month. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're trying to plan something around that. So not necessarily donation wise, but just uh, the kind of ideas around it are movement, connection and sharing. So we're going to get uh, get something like that out and, and just get it out to the network and see if uh, we can help some people connect. Count us in. <laughs> Yeah, we don't even need to know what it is. We're yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> and it can it involve rocking? Because I'm I'm currently training for uh, my own personal rock challenge. So if it involves rocking, that could be really there's beneficial for me. Not not necessarily, but it's basically there's a movement portion. Okay. A like actually connecting with somebody portion, and then a sharing, um, a story or yeah. So there's definitely a movement okay. portion to it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I believe today is National Happiness Day. So happy is National it? Happiness Day. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. That's, yeah, I like that. There was, uh, <laughs> yeah. There was some, I was in Toronto today and there was uh, quite a bit of sun shining uh, through and uh, it was at my sister's apartment and, and I was on the balcony and the sun was uh, kind of beaming in and and I, that makes it even better to know that it was uh, National Happiness Day because I, you know, I did have, you know, a moment where I kind of like you know, looked up and, and smiled and, you know, felt a, a calming sensation. And, and so, yeah, I, I felt pretty happy at that moment. So I'm <laughs> glad to hear that there's it's nationally recognized. <laughs> Love it, Dave. Right on. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do have one more question and it's kind of been floating around in my brain ever since we connected with you guys. And now, that I have carried a ruck on my back for 21 days straight. Um, and there's so many great metaphors and like mindsets around rocking. And, and I know you've touched on a couple, um, but I, I can't remember where I saw it. Somebody was talking about the invisible backpack. We were, might've been the, it was the third perspective podcast, third perspective podcast. So yeah. is, is that, how you could connect rocking to the mental health or is that something you do where it's like, you know, the burden of this weight I'm carrying is actually nothing in comparison to X, Y, Z. Uh, so what's, what's the perspective of that for you, Dave and, and Ellie? Yeah, I, so, I mean, the, the term, you know, rucksack, uh, it is a military term you know referring to backpack that you know we wear into the field or in operations or whatever where we carry everything that we need to sustain us uh while we're out there so you know we're completely self-sufficient between our you know our clothing our sleep kit our, our food our water everything that we have uh, that we need to sustain us is on our backs so there is, there's an easy, yeah, I think there's a, a sort of an easy metaphor there that, um, you know, you, you might be able to take the rucksack off your back, but everything that you carry um, in life, you know, sustaining you day to day, you know, this, it can still be pretty heavy on the back, um, even though you, you know, physically remove that rucksack off your back. You could still be carrying um, a lot of things day to day to that help you get through and keep you going. And um, some days that, that rucksack could be 
nice and light and uh, feel like there's there's very little weighing you down and, and you're just uh, got to you know, hop in your step or whatever. And then other days, um, you know, maybe it's a little rain waterlogged and you've got extra weight in there and it's uh, a little harder, harder to carry. Um, so I, I, I like to think that, you know, life, uh, you know, the, the, the rucksack of life is, uh, is kind of always on our backs. And, uh, so Allie and I, you know, with the rock and rise podcast and with the, the rock marching that we do, um, I've always uh, or not always, but more so in the last like year or so, especially with, you know, my sister becoming ill and she was getting back into running and, and, and then obviously this illness sort of took her away from that. So I always like to think, man, I'm going to put a rucksack on my back and I'm going to get moving because I can, like, because my, my body will allow me to do it because physically I don't have any excuse not to do it so because my body will allow me to do it i'm i'm going to get out there and i'm going to do it because a lot of people that would like to be in my shoes unfortunately you know due to circumstances that are out of their control they they can't they can't do it so i'm i'm going to do it now <laughs> summed it up pretty well dave <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave you anything thanks a lot yeah yeah i think just like training with that weight it just and it is hard right like it's a mental grind so i think preparing and doing that physically it helps you prepare for emotional challenges and stuff like that because it helps build resilience that's what i find anyway mm -hmm. that's an absolutely amazing way to answer that um well ali dave this has been amazing but before we let you guys rock on uh, <laughs> that was, I like, you know, I call her, it's good. I call her, I call her, I call her my, I call her my rock star. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the rock star. Uh, no, before we let you guys go, where can the high nation connect with you? Where can they, um, if they're in the Peterborough area, where, where can they find you guys for the walks and, and everything else you guys got on the go? Yeah. So Instagram is probably the easiest way. Um, we are rock and rise podcast on Instagram. For our mental health walks, uh, we do have a separate page for that. It's uh, Mental Health Walks 2023. But you can also find us on the Rock and Rise podcast, and I could direct you there or give you the information. So, and we do have an email account, uh, and it is rockandrise at gmail.com. So, those are probably the easiest ways for people to, to get in touch with us. And if they're local and they want to meet up for a coffee or go for just a regular walk no ruck we're always up for that too um yeah, yeah. yeah. i want to quickly uh, jump in and, and give you guys kudos but uh greg the the videos and the daily posts and the and the getting the ruck on and getting out there and after and promoting the the march challenge um like kudos to you and thank you so much for doing what you're doing um, because you know I we repost it it's inspiring to us and I'm sure it's inspiring to many others uh, around and uh, I think it's great that you're just you know hammering this challenge out and, and really promoting it and pushing it so um, you know thanks for thanks for doing that well it's my pleasure man appreciate it yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, which one of you two is going to give us uh, the uh, the lesson on Tony Hawk there in the corner there? Uh, <laughs> Dave, you kind of look like Tony Hawk, so let's let's say uh, you know, it's like a sick a sick Ollie or something like that, or or that, what? That's that's awesome. Yeah, it's that's great. I uh, I mean, I was a huge Tony Hawk fan. Uh, you know, I was big into skateboarding when I was you know I don't know thirty. 14, yeah, uh, probably 12, 13, 14. I was like, yeah, I love skateboarding. Tony Hawk was a big fan. That, those are actually my son's uh, skateboards. Okay. That, uh, yeah, uh, that are in the corner there. And uh, he, he still has to pick them up one of these days. He's taking new He still store, yeah. he <laughs> stores some skating. of his stuff here Rock in our skating. podcast. Yeah, room. rook skating. Look for it in the next election. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 We are going to try a uh, tandem cross country skiing next winter oh, man. <laughs> like, like both on the same set of skis that's a thing yeah God, we, we saw this there. but like documentary about we it went, we went to watch the Banff uh, film festival um you know they they aired a bunch of the short films they aired them here in peterborough 
And the last film that we watched of the night was these uh, two guys doing uh, participating participating in a uh, a really famous uh, cross country ski, ski race, and they did it tandem. They did it on. <laughs> Uh, like the same set of skis. They like had to you, get them specially like made. Picture a tandem bike, but these <laughs> are two skiers. So, wow. yeah, yeah Allie, I got so. all fired up about it. Dave does not want to do it. I said, Dave, with your speed and my powerful legs, we're going to be unstoppable. <laughs> and he is still not on board. But it's like a winning know. solution to me. I can't it wait. Is. Oh. And if to me, it else, seems like an be... argument waiting to happen. But <laughs> yeah, I... It's going to be our first fight. <laughs> <laughs> we will be once we crash yeah. oh, it'll well, just be so entertaining Dave, a quick story I just saw Tony Hawk an interview with Tony Hawk just the other day and oh, they, yeah. the skate park with his son and uh, this this guy around him comes up to me like dude you look just like Tony Hawk <laughs> and, and he's like huh well you don't say he's like <laughs> Yeah, I, I would swear that you were Tony Hawk, but yeah, obviously, you know, you don't have a skateboard, so you're not Tony Hawk. So he grabs his kid's skateboard, he gets and just does like all this, you know, you know what Tony Hawk does, and the guy's just like, so I'm an idiot. I, I'm yeah. an idiot. You are Tony Hawk, and I'm an idiot. Thanks for that. And yeah. He told the story, and I laughed my ass off. I thought it was super funny. Uh, you that's know, great. You know, that's awesome. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, Hive Nation, look out for the tandem cross country skiing <laughs> skating and more actual real life <laughs> monthly challenges uh yeah. Allie, Dave, thanks for joining us and thanks for everything you guys do to the community for thanks now for thank us. you guys it's been thanks fun. a lot i'm nation we're out <laughs>